bright duty every student matters hello students welcome back so till now we have discussed about squares and perfect squares their properties now we are going to discuss about square roots right so what is a square root let us first have a basic idea or we should you know know the term what is square root that we are going to discuss in this so what is a square root suppose i give you a rectangle like this okay let this be a rectangle and this is the diagonal that i have drawn so i'm naming it as a b c d we have done in the chapter understanding quadrilateral that the rectangle each of the angle is equal to 90 degrees now if you know one of the side right suppose you know that it is 3 okay and we know that it is coming as 4 these are given to you so what will be the ac first okay so to find out ac okay to find out the side ac what we need to do is we need to apply Pythagoras theorem because this is a right angle triangle so we can write in triangle abc we can write ab square plus bc square is equal to ac square right we know the measurement of ab and bc putting the values of ab and bc we get ac square right then 3 square is 9 Four square is sixteen equals AC square, so we get twenty five equal to AC square. Now to find out AC, we need to do what? We need to tell a number whose square is twenty five, right? So the number whose square is twenty five is five. So now what we are doing? We are doing the inverse operation of squares uh, what we were doing earlier is we were given the number and we were calculating the square by multiplying the number with itself but here what we are given with we know already the answer of square we need to find out that number we need, we know the square of that number we need to find out that number so if you see here square of 5 is 25 and square of minus 5 if i do that is also 25 right because minus 5 multiplied with minus 5 it gives us 25 only right minus minus would be plus in multiplication so this is how we are getting it so we know that to find out the square root whenever we do the square root the inverse operation where we know the square and we are finding out the number this process of finding that particular number whose square is known to us is known as finding square root is that clear suppose i say x square is equal to 16 right so 16 i will get by 4 square as well as minus 4 square this will also give 16 this will also give 16 but in this chapter in our class 8 we are just going to focus on positive values of the numbers clear so here it will be plus 5 so ac will be 5 and here x will be 4 clear now to do the square we just put in the power 2 of that particular number to represent square root what is the symbol now we got ac square as 25 so when we find ac the inverse operation to find out the number whose square is already known is represented as the symbol and we write 25 in it and the answer is 5 is that clear so this symbol this one this is the symbol for square root right this symbol is known as a symbol of square root is that clear now we are going to discuss about only positive values right otherwise whenever we take the square root of any number we get two answers one positive and one negative i hope what a square root is this idea is clear to us yes so i am repeating again what is square root square root is the inverse operation of finding squares as subtraction is inverse of addition similarly here 
we are finding square root that is opposite operation or inverse operation of squares so what we do in this is in squares we were doing we were given the number we were finding out the square now we will know the square right we are going to find out which number has been squared which number is multiplied with itself so that we have got this number that means we will already know the value of the square of that number we have to find that particular number that's the main concept for today's class okay let us now move to the process of finding a square root how do we find the square root right how to find the square root so i'm giving you some basic examples and then we'll go ahead just to see square of 1 is equal to 1 so square root we will write square root of 1 is 1 then square of 2 is equal to 4 now 4 is a square of which number 2 so we say we read it like this square of 2 is 4 and square root of 4 is 2 right so we will write square root of 4 is 2 right you understanding there is an inverse relationship now if i do 3 square i would like you to think over it this will be read as this will be read as square of 3 is 9 and square root of 9 is 3 right this is how we write now suppose i give you an example of 4 square it is equal to 16 now i think you people can think of a statement that we can read it that square of 4 is 16 but think about it it is square root of 16 is 4 clear this is how we read so you see there is an inverse relationship between square and square root i hope this gives you a clear idea about what a square root is the symbol of square root is this right this is the square uh, root symbol we call it as square root symbol okay what does this actually mean is if we write x in the square root it means x to the power half okay this is known as square root is this clear so let's move ahead now we'll do one or two examples which will you know give you a more clear idea about the square root so here it is asked 11 square is equal to 121 what is the square root of 121 it would be 11 right see 11 into 11 is 121 clear so when we multiply the number with itself that means the number 11 with itself we're getting 121 square of 11 is 121 square root of 121 would be 11 so one thing that i would like you to observe it in the square number we have that number two times but in the square root of that number we have that number once is that clear so we are going to do pairing of the numbers definitely when we find out square root this will be explained more in detail in the next topic now see 14 square is 196 what is the square of square root of 196 it will be 14 14 square is 196 if you take 196 square root the answer would be 14 clear now because these are the number whose square and square root are already given to us so we are able to find it what about some very large numbers whose square we do not know or we do not know that the square uh, this is a square of which number for that we have different methods like long division like prime factorization there are many methods to calculate it we are going to discuss two or three methods in the lecture okay just to see now observe these two tables here the statement is given and here the inference is given what this is inferring to us just say one square is one and square root of one is one yes this is only we have discussed square root square of two is four and square root of four is two square of three is nine square root of nine is three square of four is sixteen square root of sixteen is four square of 5 is 25 and square root of 25 is 
5. Inverse operation as you see. Similarly, we have written it for 6 square, 7 square, 8 square, 9 square and 10 square. And we have written their square roots. Right. So what do you observe from here? We observe that in the square of that number, that number is coming twice. But in the square root of that number, that number appears once. Clear? Now here is one interesting property or I say an interesting method that would lead you to find out square root. As you can read, finding square root through repeated subtraction. How do we find it? Now you know repeated addition when we did. Suppose we had to express any number, let it be 9. We can express it because it is a perfect square. We can express it as 1 plus 3 plus 5. We have expressed it as sum of 3 odd numbers, right? Also from 9, first we will subtract 1, we get 8. From 8, we subtract the next odd number that is 3, we get 5. And from 5, we subtract the next odd number that is that is 5 and we get 0 is the answer. So we were able to reach on the uh, conclusion that 9 would be a perfect square. Also, there will be 3 odd numbers only. It is a square of 3. So that is also one of the results that we have already done. Now we are finding square root using repeated subtraction. Let us take one example of 81. Just to see here, 81 is there. So we will do what? We know that 81 definitely can be expressed as sum of odd numbers. Consecutive odd numbers starting from 1. Now we are going to do repeated subtraction. What does repeated subtraction means? It means that we are going to subtract 1. Whatever answer we get from that, we will subtract 3. Whatever answer we get from there, we will subtract 5 from it. Right? So let us try it and see how many steps we are done with to get 0. So first of all, 80, first step is 81 minus 1. What we get? 80. Let's do the second step. From 80, whatever the answer we got, we will subtract the next odd number. After 1, the next odd number is 3. We will get 77. Now the third one, from 77, we will subtract the next number. Odd, next odd number that is 5 77 minus 5 is 72 now the fourth step from 72 we will subtract the next odd number and the number is 9 clear if we subtract this how much will we get so we will get 63 the fifth step is we are going to repeat the steps until and unless we get 0. 63 minus what is the next odd number? It is 11. So if we subtract 11 from it, we get 52. Right? Now, the sixth step will be from 52, what is the next odd number? It is 13. So what we will do? We will subtract 13 from it. We get 39. Right? Seventh step is from 39, we will subtract 15. Right? So from 39, if we subtract 15, what we get? We get 24. Now, eighth part, from 24, we will subtract 17. Right? So from 24, subtract 17. What do we get? From 24, subtract 17. Now, what will be the next step? The next step is 72 minus what is the next number, next odd number after 5? It is 7. So, from 72, we are going to subtract 7. We get 65. Now, the fifth step is from 65, we are going to subtract 9. Right? So, if we subtract 9, we get 56. Right? The next step from 56, we will subtract 11. If we subtract 11, just see 6 minus 1 is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. We get 45. The next step is, from 45, we will subtract 13. Let us subtract it. 5 minus 3 gives us 2. 4 minus 1 gives us 3. Eighth part, so we are going to repeat the steps until and unless we get 0 at the end. If this is a perfect square, then definitely we are going to get the answer as 0. 
okay now how to find the square root this is what we are doing so the now the next step from 32 we are going to subtract 15 right and we are going to get 17 after it now the ninth step is from 17 what is the next odd number it is 17 if we subtract we get 0 that means this 81 the number which was given to us is a perfect square right and it is a perfect square of which number that is going to be decided by the number of steps we have done how many steps we have done we have done nine steps so 81 square root will be 9 that means we say square of 9 is 81 so square root of 81 will be 9 clear so whenever you have to find the square root using repeated subtraction what we are going to do we are going to subtract the consecutive odd numbers starting from one okay and so on the number of steps will tell us the square number which is given to us is square of which number that means we can find out the square root of it. I think it is clear. So if you want, we can try multiple examples other than 81. We can try with 16. We can try with 25, 36, whichever perfect squares do we have with 144. But what if the numbers are too large? Will we keep on subtracting? So it will be too long. The calculation are also going to be tedious and it is going to take a lot of time. So how to save time and find out square root without much calculations. So yes, we have a solution for that also. We are going to discuss them in detail now. So just to see here, there are some questions given. So first of all, let us master whatever we have done till now. They are asking by repeated subtraction of odd numbers starting from 1, find whether the following numbers are perfect squares or not. So how do we get to know that whether the number is a perfect square or not? We keep on subtracting the odd numbers until and unless we get 0. If we get 0 at the end, just by subtracting the consecutive odd numbers, we say that number is a perfect square. Otherwise, it is not a perfect square. Now, first thing is we have to recognize whether it's a perfect square or not. The second thing that we have to do is, they're asking if the number is a perfect square, then we have to find the square root also. Clear? That will definitely be decided by number of steps as in case of 81 we have done. Okay, so let us try with the first part that is 121. So see here, we are going to try with 121. We will subtract odd numbers starting from 1. 121 minus 1 gives us 120, right? Second step, we will do 120 minus 3, right? After 1, the next odd number is 3. So what we will get? It is the first part that we are discussing. So I am naming them as, okay, let us name them as 1 and second step. Okay, 120 minus 3 is 117. Now the third part is 120 we have got, now we got 117. So from this number, we are going to subtract the next odd number and it is 5. Okay, so if we subtract, we get 112. After this, fourth step will be what? Can you think of it? It will be 112 minus after 5, the next odd number is 7, right? So, we will get 105. Is that clear? Now, the next step will be from 105. What is the next odd number? Do you know that? The next odd number is 9. So, if we subtract 9 from 105, we will get 96. Clear. Now the next number is 96 and from it we are going to subtract the next odd number. So after 9 what is the next odd number? It is 11. If we subtract we get 85. Now the seventh step. In this from 85 we will subtract the next odd number that is 13. So if we subtract from 85 13 we get 72. Next step. What we will do from 72, we will subtract the next odd number. It is 15. If we do that, we are going to get 57. Next step, step number 9. From 57, we will subtract a number after 15 and it should be odd. That is 17. So, we get 15. 
uh, we get 40 here right 10th step from 40 we subtract 19 what we will get we will get 21 now the next step from 21 the next odd number after 19 is 21 so 21 minus 21 gives us 0 so yes at the end after subtracting odd numbers only we are getting 0 at the end so we write yes 121 is a perfect square right so if it is a perfect square we have to find the square root of that number so we know that how many steps we have operated 11 so 121 square root will be equal to 11 how many steps we have got 0 in 11 steps we got 0 that means by subtracting 11 odd numbers we got 121 as 0 so the square root of 121 is 11 this is how we find out that means 121 is a square of 11 and square root of 121 is 11 you understand the relationship between them the inverse relationship between them so we have done for 121 now we can move to the second part that is 55 okay let us do that the second part is 55 okay so first of all we will subtract 1 so let me write in the next step the first step is 55 minus 1 what we get we get 54 second step will be from 54 we will subtract the next odd number that is 3 we get 51 in the next step from 51 we will subtract 5 what we will get we will get 46 the next step is from 46 we will subtract 7 that gives us 39 right the next step from 39 we will subtract 9 we get 30 in the next step from 30 we will subtract 11 so what we are left with we are left with 19 now seventh step from 19 we will subtract how much 11 so we get what 6 and are we getting 0 because from 6 now the next step is to subtract 15 we are going to get a negative number so this number 55 is not a perfect square because by solving it and subtracting the odd consecutive numbers starting from 1 we are not getting 0 at the end now we will start getting negative numbers so we are not going to get 0 after subtracting odd numbers clear so 55 is not a perfect square right now we are going to practice the third one that is 36 okay let us do for 36 now in the third part we are given 36 let's try with 36 so first step will be we will subtract one from it what we get 35 second step from 35 what we will subtract students we are going to subtract 3 we get how much 35 minus 3 gives us 32 the next step is from 32 what we will subtract we will subtract 5 if we subtract 5 from 32 we get 27 the fourth step is from 27 we will subtract the next odd number which is 7 so we get 20 the next step is from 20 we will subtract 9 we get what 11 the next step is from 11 the next odd number after 9 is 11 so we get the answer as 0 so you see after subtracting the consecutive odd numbers starting from 1 we are going to get at the end the answer as 0 right that means 36 is a perfect square so you will write yes 36 is a perfect square clear now if this is a perfect square they are asking us to find its square root how to find out the square root we know how many steps we have performed we have performed six steps that means six odd numbers we have subtracted so 36 is a square of six and we say square root of 36 is six right so what is the square root of this number answer is six i hope you can try this for 49 and 90 as well let us discuss for 49 and 90 also you may match your answers while i discuss you can also try them independently in your notebooks let us check for 
49. So first step is to subtract 1 from it. What we get? We get 48. The second step is from 48 we subtract 3. What we get? We get 45. The next step is from 45 we will subtract 5. We get how much? 40. The next step is from 40. What is the next odd number? 7. We are going to get 33. The next step, that means the step number 5 is from 33, we are going to subtract 9. If we subtract 9 from 33, how much we will get? We will get 26. Right? Not 26, we will get 24. In the sixth step, what we will do? From 24, we will subtract 11. Right? 4 minus 1 is 3 and 2 minus 1 is 1. We get 13. Now, in the next step, from 13 what is the next odd number after 11 it is 13 so we are going to get the answer is 0 what we see here we observe that after going with the repeated subtraction of odd numbers at the end we got 0 as the answer what does this uh, you know represent this represent that this is a perfect square so yes 49 is a perfect square clear and this is a perfect square now we are going to tell what is the square root of it how many steps we have done seven steps so we can write seven square is equal to 49 and square root of 49 is seven clear this is how we read or write and this is the symbol for square root clear the next part that we have to do is for 90 let us do for 90 also right so the first step that we will do is 90 minus 1 that is 89 the second step is 89 minus 3 what we get 86 the next step is from 86 what we will subtract if you observe after 3 we will subtract 5 we get 81 after this what we are going to do from 81 we will subtract 7 right so how much we are going to get 74 the next step from 74 we have to subtract 9 what we get 65 the next step is from 65 we will subtract 11 so 5 minus 1 is 4 6 minus 1 is 5 we get 54 the next step is from 54 we are going to subtract what 13 if we do that 4 minus 3 gives us 1 5 minus 1 gives us 4 clear the next step is from 41 we'll subtract 15 right if we subtract 15 from it what we get just to see 11 minus 5 will give us 6 clear then 3 minus 1 will give us 2 is that clear the next step is from 26 we are going to subtract 17 clear if we subtract 17 from 26 what are we going to get just perform it in your notebooks we are going to get we will get 9 clear the next step is from 9 the next odd number is 21 so will we get 0 at the end no we are not going to get 0 at the end so from this it is clear that after doing the repeated subtraction we are not going to get 0 at the end this shows that 90 is not a perfect square i hope the idea or the method of finding square root using the repeated subtraction is quite clear now we have discussed examples we have done this question which has five parts right let's move ahead now so now we, what we will do is we are going to find square root there is another method to find the square root that is using prime factorization because we have observed that the method of repeated subtraction is included or uh, uh, in this it is included a lot of calculation and it is time consuming right yes the method is quite easy to understand we just have to subtract the odd numbers but in subtracting those and now counting the number of steps is taking a lot of time so to avoid that there is a new method that is prime factorization i know you people know 
you people are already familiar with prime factorization what is prime factorization we are going to start the dividing the number with the first prime number that the number is divisible by so let us take some example suppose i have to do the prime factorization of 6 c if i have to do for 6 we will divide it so the first number that it is divisible by is 2 and we have to start with the prime number so 2 is the first prime number 2 3 is 6 so we are going to express 6 as 2 multiplied with 3 let us try with 16 with 16 first we with 2 2 8 is 16 then 2 4 is 8 then 2 2 is 4 and 2 1 is 2 so how many 2's we are getting in 16 16 is written as 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 that means we have expressed 16 as the product of prime numbers is that clear let us try with 36 36 let us try we'll try with 2 2 1s are and 2 8s are 16 right 2 8s are 16 the next one is 2 again 2 9s are 18 now 9 is not divisible by 3 uh, not divisible by 2 so we'll divide it by 3 3 3s are 9 right so you see 36 is expressed as 2 cross 2 into 3 cross 3 is this clear what is prime factorization i just wanted you to know what is prime factorization you are already familiar with so we have revisited what is prime factorization now we are going to use this method to find out the square root of square numbers which will be given to us let us start with that particular method now now we know what is prime factorization let us try to reveal or let us try to learn some of the conclusions from the prime factorization of number and square of its prime okay so just see square of that number so we know square of 6 is 36 okay we have done prime factorization of 6 we got how much 2 into 3 we'll write that 2 into 3 what is prime factorization of 36 we got 2 2 times and 3 2 times so we'll write that we got 2 into 2 into 3 into 3 so what do you observe here we observe just to see occurrence of 2 in the prime factorization of 6 is how many times one time in the square of that number that means 36 occurrence of 2 is how many times two times just see here 2 is coming one time here it is coming two times similarly 3 is coming one time here and 3 is coming two time here right let us try with some other number also and then we will reach to some conclusion if i do for 8 what will i get 2 4 is 8 then again with 2 2 2 is 4 again with 2 right so in 8 i am getting 2 into 2 into 2 that means occurrence of 2 is 3 times here let us try with the square of it square of it is 64 so let us try with 64 64 will get 2 2 3s are 6 2 2s are 4 again with 2 it is divisible 2 1s are 2 2 6s are 12 now again with 2 2 8s are 16 then again with 2 2 4s are 8 then again with 2 then again with 2 so for 64 how many 2s we are getting 1 2 3 4 5 6 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 we get 6 times so we observe that the number of occurrence or number of times 2 has occurred in 8 is 3 but in the square of that number the number of 2 has gone doubled it is 6 here here how many 2's are there 6 and here how many are there 3 here how many 2's is there 1 and here 2 and here how many 3's 1 here how many 3's 2 so what we are observing that the number of prime factors that occur in that number the number of those prime factors gets doubled it becomes twice in the square of that number so just observe one simple thing just see here in 6 we got 2 into 3 and 36 here we got 2 into 2 into 3 into 3 right so just see 36 can be written as square of 2 into square of 3 or this can also be written as 2 into 3 whole square 
and we get 6 whole square. So by doing the prime factorization, what we got that 36 is a square of 6. Similarly, for some very large numbers, we will get some number like this. As in case of 36 we are getting. So we can say that 36 is a square of 6. Now if we have to find out the square root, we will use the symbol of square root over 36 and this side here 6 will come only because in the square root only that number will come once but in the square of that number it is coming two times. So what we are going to use, we are going to use this logic in finding out whether uh, how can we find the square root of number using prime factorization. What we will do is we are going to form the pairs as I formed pair in this of 2 and 3 right 2 and 2 made 2 square 3 and 3 made 3 square now I will just be taking them one time because in the square of that number they are coming two times and in this number itself it will come one time that means in the square of that number they are going to come two times so we have to just take one one number from that particular pair that means from the pair of 2 cross 2 we have to take 2 from the pair of 3 cross 3 we have to take 3 so 2 cross 3 because becomes 6 and we know that 36 is a square of 6. So we can find out the square root of any number using prime factorization. I hope this has given you much clear ideas. As soon as we you know practice a lot of questions based on the same concept, the concept is going to be very much clear to you. Just see here, we have to find the square root of 6400. So what we will do? We will do the prime factorization. Okay, let us do that. 6400. Let's start with 2. Okay. 2 3s are 6. 2 2s are 4. 0 0. Then again with 2. 2 1s are 2. 2 6s are 12. 0 and 0. We are just dividing them. Again with 2. 2 8s are 16. 0 0. 2 4s are 8. 0 0. Then again with 2. 2 2s two are 4. 0 and 0. 2 1s are 2 and 0. Then again with 2, 2 5s are 10, 0. Again 2 2s are 4, 2 5s are 10. Now 25 is not divisible by 2. The next prime number after 2 is 3. Th by 3 also 25 will not be divided. Now the next prime number after 3 is 5. Let us divide it with 5. 5 5s are 25 and 5 is divisible by 5 itself. Let us write 6400 as equal to. How many times we have 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. So 2 into 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 2. We have written 2 8 times and 5 is to be written 2 times because it is there 2 times only. Right? Now what we will do? We will go, we are going to find out the pairs. We will form the pairs. So this is one pair, this is another pair, this is another pair. This is another pair and this is another pair. There is no number left out. When there is no number left out, it is quite sure that the number is a perfect square. And we will be able to find its square root very easily. Now, I told you we can write it as 2 square, 2 into 2. The next pair is also 2 square. The next one also is 2 square. The next one also is 2 square and the last one is 5 square clear 6400 is equal to now we can write we know the law of exponent if we have a to the power m and b to the power m we can write it as a cross b whole power s m right so let us multiply these numbers together 2 cross 2 cross 2 cross 2 cross 5 and it's whole square right all the numbers are written once and the square is there outside now we will take square root okay so square root of 64 we know in the square of that number, these numbers are going to come two times. But in the square root, it will come just one time. So here 2 is two times, we will just write it once. Here 2 is two times, we will write it once. Here 2 is two times, we will write once. In the next 2, we are going to take 1, 2 out of these 2, 2. And out of 2, 5, we will take just 1, 5. That means we just have to take these numbers and we have to ignore the power then. Just see, 2, 2 is a 4. 4 2s are 8, 8 2s are 16 and 16 5s are 80. So we get 80. So 6400 square root of 6400 is 80. Just see 80 cross 80. 
gives us 6400 that means square of 80 is 6400 and square root of 6400 is 80 so how do we find the square root of any number using prime factorization just do the prime factorization like this make pairs and from the pairs just take one number like from this i took one two from this another two from this another two from this 1 2 and from these two fives 1 5 and we got the value as 80 so directly we're getting the square root of 6400 using prime factorization this is how we calculate square root of any number using prime factorization so i would like you to remind that we have done today two of the things two methods for finding square root one is the repeated subtraction keep on subtracting numbers odd numbers from the number and we're going to get zero at the end and the number of steps will tell us the square root of that number and the second step that we have discussed is this one where we are going to do the prime factorization and at last we would be able to find out the square root clear so this is the way how we find out square root there is one more method that we will discuss in the next video and that is also really interesting so let us just do with it right why prime factorization we need to do because repeated subtraction can't be done with large numbers it will take a lot of time and number of steps would be performed in that so we do square root method this is by we find square root by prime factorization method i hope this gives you a clear idea let us practice one more question so that we master this also you can take perfect squares many perfect squares and you can try finding the square root using prime factorization clear just to see here then asking is 90 a perfect square is it let us check it so we can check it by uh, repeated subtraction that we have already done now i will ask you to check it by prime factorization let's do it together just do prime factorization of 90 in your notebooks along with me so i'm doing it 90 first of all will be divided by 2 2 fours are 8, 2 fives are 10. Now 45 is not divisible by 2, it's an odd number. Let's try with 3. 3 ones are 3 and 1 is left, 3 fives are 15. Now again with 3, 3 fives are 15 and 5 is divisible by 5 only. So 90 is equal to 2 cross, 3 cross, 3 cross, 5. So let us try to form pairs. If pairs are formed, if all the numbers are there in pair, then definitely 90 is a perfect square. Otherwise, it is not. So we see that the pair is only formed for 3. 2 is left unpaired. 5 is left unpaired. So we say 90 is not a perfect square clear this is how you are going to check whether a number is a perfect square or not using prime factorization otherwise what will you do if you don't know prime factorization you will do it repeated subtraction or addition right by repeated subtraction you should get zero at the end and by repeated addition after adding the consecutive odd numbers starting from one we should get 90 as the answer clear but we will not get it so it is not a perfect square I hope this gives you a more clear idea about the perfect squares. Let's move ahead with a very interesting question. Just to see here, they are saying that is 2352 a perfect square? So first of all, we will check whether it's a perfect square or not. We'll do the prime factorization of it and try to pair the prime numbers. If not, find the smallest multiple of 2352, which is a perfect square. That means 2, 3, 5, 2 should be multiplied because they're asking a multiple. It should be multiplied with something. If this is not a perfect square, it should be multiplied with something so that it becomes a perfect square. And when we multiply it, it will become a perfect square. Of that number, we have to find the square root. Let us first solve the first part asked, which is, is 2, 3, 5, 2 a perfect square? Let us do the prime factorization of 2, 3, 5, 2. Let's start with 2. Even number, the first prime is 2. 2 ones are 2. 2 ones are 2. 2 sevens are 14. 2 six are 12. Right? Again with 2. 2 fives are 10. Then 2 eights are 16. 2 eights are 16. Right? 588 we get. Again with 2. 2 twos are 4. 2 nines are 18. 2 fours are 8. Then let us do with again 2 because it's still even. 2 ones are 2. 
टू फोर ज एट टू सेवन ज फोर्टीन नाउ वन फोर्टी सेवन विल नॉट बी डिविजल बाय टू स्टूडेंट सो वट इज द नेक्स्ट ओड नंबर प्राइम नंबर दैट वी सी इट इज थ्री ओके इज इट डिविजल बाय थ्री लेट्स ट्राई इट थ्री फोर ज ट्वेल्व वी आर लेफ्ट विद टू इट बिकम्स ट्वेंटी सेवन देन थ्री नाइन ज ट्वेंटी सेवन नाउ फोर्टी नाइन इज नॉट डिविजल बाय थ्री सो लेट एस ट्राई विद फाइव विच इज द नेक्स्ट प्राइम नंबर सो इट इज नॉट डिविजल बाय फाइव ऑल्सो सो Let us try the next prime number that is seven. Seven seven is a forty-nine, and seven is divisible by seven only. So see two, three, five, two can be written as how many times two have? Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. How many times do we have three? One time. How many times seven? Two times. So it. Let us now try to pair the prime numbers. This is one pair of two with two. This is another pair of two with two. This is pair of seven with seven. Three is left unpaired. So is it a perfect square? No, because three is left unpaired. So two three five two is not a perfect square. Two thousand three hundred and fifty two is not a perfect square. Now, what are they asking? If this is not a perfect square, find the smallest multiple of two, three, five, two, which is a perfect square. Now, see, this number can be made a perfect square if this three is paired. If we multiply two, three, five, two with three, if we multiply both the sides with three, two, three, five, two, we multiply it with three, right? So here also we need to multiply with three, both the sides, right? Because then only it will get balanced. So three into three will become one more pair. So the number, the smallest multiple of two, three, five, two, which is a perfect square, is two, three, five, two multiplied with three. Because when we multiply this one, this number with three, then all the numbers will be paired right only 3 is unpaired so we need one more 3 to make all the numbers as pairs so let us multiply it 2 3 5 2 multiplied with 3 3 2 the 6 3 5 the 15 one is a carry over 3 3 3 the 9 and 1 10 then again there is a carry 3 2 the 6 and 1 7 so what is the number that we are getting 7 0 5 is the smallest multiple of 2 3 5 2 which is a perfect square now we are sure that this number would be a perfect square so what you need to do is we need to do the prime factorization of 7 0 5 6 to find out the square root of new number clear let us do that just to see 7 0 5 6 let's start it okay let us start with 2 Two threes are six. Two fives are ten. Two twos are four. Two eights are sixteen. Again with two. Two ones are two. Two sevens are fourteen. Two sixes are twelve. Two fours are eight. Again with two. Two eights are sixteen. Two eights are sixteen. Two twos are four. Again with two. Two fours are eight. Two fours are eight. Two ones are two. Right? Can we do it with three now? Let's try. Three ones are three. Four forty one. Try to divide it with three. Three ones are three, right? One is left. Copy four. Three fours are twelve. Two is left. Copy one. Three sevens are yes. It is divisible. So we'll divide it with three, and we will get one hundred and forty-seven. Again with three, we get three fours are twelve. Three nines are twenty-seven. Now forty-nine. We know it will be divisible by seven. Clear? So see, we are getting seven zero. 5 six as the product of which numbers we are getting it as 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 right 4 times 2 we have 2 times 3 we have and 2 times 7 we have so let us try to form the pairs now 1 2 then 3 with 3 and 7 with 7 there are four pairs made there is nothing left unpaired so yes it is a perfect square now 7 0 5 6 can be written as 2 square The first one, the next one, two square, the next one, three square, and next one, seven square. From this, clear? We know that seven zero five six. The number of prime numbers will come. 
two times as comparison to square root. So in square root of 7056, there will be only one time we will take. Here 2 is coming two time, we'll take it one time. Right? Here 2 is two time, one time we will take. Again two time, we will take 3 as one time. 7 square will just take 7. So see how much do we get? 2 2 is 4. 4 3 is 12. 12 7 is 84. Right, so 7056 is the square of 84 and square root of 7056 is 84. Is that clear? So what is the thing that you have understood from the question is, first of all they were asking that whether it is a perfect square or not. So we did the prime factorization and saw that one number 3 was left unpaired. So we said that it is not a perfect square. Now to make it a perfect square what we need? We need one more 3. Okay, so if we add one more 3 into it, we have to multiply 2, 3, 5, 2 with 3 so that we get a number that is a perfect square. So the smallest multiple of 2, 3, 5, 2 that is a perfect square is 7, 0, 5, 6. Then they are asking find the square root of the new number. Of the square root of the new number is 84. Is that clear? Again, by prime factorization only we have calculated. So, I hope this has given you more clear idea about how to solve question on square roots. Let's practice one more question. Here is another question. It is asking, find the smallest number by which this must be divided. Right? In the last one it was, it should be multiply. Here it is what it should be divided with. So that the question is a perfect square. Find the square root of that question. That means we will divide 9408 with something so that it becomes a perfect square. And then we are going to find out the square root of that number. Let's try to find it out. So 9408, let's do the prime factorization of it. Okay. Starting with 2. We will start with 2. 2 4s are 8. 2 7s are 14. 0. 2 4s are 8. It is still an even number. We will divide it by 2. So 2 1, 2 2s are 4. Then 2 3s are 6. 2 5s are 10. 2 2s are 4. Clear? Let's again do it with 2. 2 1s are 2. 2 1s are 2. 2 7s are 14. Right? And 2 6 are 12 again with 2 2 5s are 10 2 8s are 16 2 8s are 16 next one 2 2s are 4 2 9s are 18 right and 2 4s are 8 again with 2 2 1s are 2 2 4s are 8 2 7s are 14 now it will not be divisible by 2 because it is an odd number let's try with the next prime number that is 3 3 4s are 12 3 nines are 3 nines are 27 then with 7 7 are 14 and we are going to get it like this so we get 9 4 0 8 as how many times do we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 2 2 2 then again we have 2 like this 6 times then we have 3 and then we have 7 2 times let us try to pair all of them these will get paired, these will get paired up, these will get paired up, these will get paired up. What is the number left unpaired? Here, 3 is left unpaired. Right, so what are they asking in the question? Yes, it is not a perfect square and with what we should divide it so that it becomes a perfect square. Let us divide both the sides with 3 because then there will be nothing left unpaired. If we divide 9408 with 3 and this side we will get 2 cross 2 into 2 cross 2 which are already the pairs into 2 cross 2 right into 3 into 7 cross 7 and we are going to divide this by 3 so 3 and 3 will get cancelled here so here we will be left with only the paired 2 cross 2 3 2 cross 2 we have right and 7 cross 7 because this is cancelled now let us divide 9 4 0 8 with 3 let's divide it here 9 4 0 8 with 3 3 3 is a 9 then you are going to copy 4 3 1s are 3, you are left with 1, right? Then we will get 3 3s are 
9 and you will be left with 1 then 18 and 2 9s are 18 right so it is going to be remainder is going to be 0 so we see that this is completely divisible by 3 and it is 3 1 3 9 right so what is the number that 9408 should be divided 9408 should be divided with 3 so that it becomes a perfect square now after dividing 9408 with 3 we get 3139 so we have to find the square root of the question that means this now we see that this is a perfect square and there we are getting 2 square 2 square 2 square and 7 so we will just take one out of these two 2 from here 2 from here 2 from here and 7 from here because it is 7 square right so square root of 3139 is equal to just see 2 2 is a 4 4 2 is a 8 8 7 is a here just see so paying attention to it just see it will not be 3139 last we got 18 so it is 36 18 right so here 6 will come up so 3136 is the number that is a perfect square and its square root is 2 2 is a 4 4 2 is a 8 8 7 is a 56 okay so 56 is the square root of the question which is 3136 i hope this gives you a more clear idea in the last question we did the question like in which we have to multiply the number so that it becomes a perfect square in this one we have discussed another type where we have to divide the given number with smallest number so that it becomes a perfect square clear let's move ahead now here also there is one question asked they are asking find the smallest square number which is divisible by each of the numbers 6 9 and 15 we have to find the smallest square number now if the number is divisible by each of this because they are asking the smallest that means they are asking the least number we are going to work on LCM right divisible by each of these three numbers so definitely we have to find out the least common multiple first and then we will see how we can make that a perfect square is that a perfect square or not let us see that just see 6 9 and 15 first of all we'll take the lcm let's take the lcm so let's start dividing with 2 so we get 2 3 is a 6 9 and 15 are not divisible we'll exactly copy them then start with 3 3 ones are 3 3 3 is a 9 3 5s are 15. Now we can go with 3. So 1s are 3 and 5 will be left. Then 5, 1, comma, 1, comma, 1. So just see what is the LCM of 6, 9, and 15? It is 2 cross 3 cross 3 cross 5. Clear? So when we multiply it, we get 2 into 3 is 6. 6 into 3 is 18. 18 5s are we get 90. Right? Only 1 is paired here. 3 is the one that is paired. 2 and 5 are left unpaired, right? That means we are writing 90 as 2 into 3 into 3 into 5. So here only 1 is a pair, right? 2 and 5 are left unpaired. Now, if we have to find the smallest one and make it a perfect square, how do we do that? Because we have to find the smallest square number. So it is not a square number, right? This is not square of some number 90. So we need to do what? To make it a perfect square, we need to multiply 2 with 2. So if this side we multiply by 2, we have to multiply 2 this side also. And 3 and 3 are already paired up. To make 5 as a paired number, we need to multiply 5 with 5, right? So here also we will do that. Both the side we need to do the same thing so that the equation remains same. Now 90 into 2 5s are 10. It becomes 900. And we see here all of them are paired. So yes, 900 is a square number. Square of what? Just see. From here we will take 2. From here we will take 3. From here we will take 5. 2 into 3 is 6. 6 5 is a 30. So we know that square root of 900 is 30. Clear? So what we are going to do is we have expressed or we have uh, sold that we got one number that was exactly divisible by. So two things are there. We have to work on smallest first thing square number that should be a square number which is divisible by each of the numbers that means now we see 90 is divis divisible by 6 as well as 9 as well as 15 because they were asking the smallest one so we calculated LCM right after calculating the LCM we find that that LCM that means 90 is not a perfect square 
Now, to make it a perfect square, we observe that 2 and 5 are left unpaired. To pair them, we need to multiply or we need to have 1 more 2 and 1 more 5. So, we did what? We multiplied 90 with 2 and 5 and on the another side also we multiplied with 2 and 5. So, we got 900. So, 900 is the smallest square number that is divisible by 6, 9 and 15. Is that clear to you? So, this is how we find it. I hope this gives you a more clear idea of prime factorization. How does it work? The method to find out square root. So this is all. That means you have got the concept through this. So what we have discussed is we have discussed first one the repeated subtraction method. Right? We were subtracting odd numbers from the number and if we get 0 we said that it is a perfect square. The number of steps defined the square of that number or the number whose square is given to us. Right? Then the second thing that we discussed we discussed about the method of prime factorization because repeated subtraction is quite lengthy, right? So, prime factorization helped us after uh, for finding out the uh, square root of that particular number by forming pairs of prime numbers. And if then we have discussed different questions of what it should be multiplied with, what the number should be divided with and the number like this that we have just discussed by calculating the LCM. I hope this gives a variety of questions we have discussed. So in the next lecture also, I am going to discuss a lot of questions based on what is taught in this lecture. So thank you so much and stay tuned for more videos like this. The next video is really very important. Thank you.